Welcome, welcome to the main stage. Any herpers out there? I thought so. Please welcome to the stage, Dominic Provost Shockley. And Catherine Burrell. Come on out, Kat. I'm always sitting in the wrong place. Where you could you could sit wherever you like. You guys, I gotta say, here, sit down. Hey. Sorry, sit down. First, but you, you know, listen up. You scoot over, scoot over there, you're kind of like on the middle. I'm doing the wrong thing again, sorry. What there are we you go. doing? No. Sitting in the middle, sitting in the middle Don't sit for diddle. This is the this is the artist bit. Do you, mean, I, do you need to put this? Down? Yeah, go ahead and put all that stuff down. You're like a little sherpa there. There's a lovely um, man back there who was like, Dom, do you want me to take some of that? She's like, I'm fine. <laughs> I've got it all. Um, no, I think I speak for everyone in the room that we are so excited for this panel, not just to talk about the show, but to talk about you guys and what the show means to everyone. Yeah. Um, let's start. With the fight for Winona, hashtags, you guys see them. It's all happening on Twitter. There's a billboard in Times Square. What has the fan reaction yeah. meant to you guys? <laughs> She's I good. Got this today. She's in good Woo. hands up here. Today is great, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I feel great. Um, firstly, can we just say that this room. Does anyone else feel like they're in Harry wow. Potter right now? <laughs> Right? This I didn't cool. go Harry Potter, but yeah. What did you go? I was like, wow, look, we're in a film. Look at this. There's <laughs> a, there's like, we're in a, you know, like John, the Jonathan Ross show. Well, we want to make it like, <laughs> or like, um, you know, oh. like the Ellen show or like, not the Ellen show, but like what would be the American version of soundstage? soundstage. I don't know that. This is going well, I feel. No, you know, you know, like, um, what's that guy? You know Graham Norton? The Graham Norton show? Yeah. He's English as well. Like that kind of thing. Anyway, thank you for having us, basically. Oh. This Sorry. is the first time it's been so swanky, so I'm a bit like, whoa! Well, we want you to feel comfortable so that you spill all the, you know, inside details and secrets of the show. Of the show, so. yeah, well, let's go yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. the show. <laughs> and these amazing fans who are here and fighting harder right than ever. Right. Yeah, we, we're yeah. so grateful for each and every one of you. And we should, we want to, we do want to tell you guys that we absolutely are seeing everything that you're doing. We know, we know that you are working so good timing, so incredibly hard for this show, and we are too. And um, please trust that we have amazing producers behind the scenes that have been working their ass off to try and get this show into its fourth season. So we appreciate all the love and all the energy and the time that you guys are putting in to join us in that fight. And we are right there with you. So we see you and we love you and we're right, right, right there fighting alongside of you. So thank you. Let's, let's take it back to the beginning. Let's rewind. Um, what did you guys know about the show before you, uh, you know, read the pilot and went in and met with people about playing these characters? And were you familiar at all with the source material? <laughs> <laughs> My God, it's like going back in time. Yes. I don't know How if you many go years ago? That was like four years ago. <coughs> four big Five. years. Big. Four big, big years. How I was 20. How old would I have been four years ago? Because <laughs> I'm 29 25? next week. 25. I'm hearing 25 as a. General consensus. General consensus was that I started by Nona when I was 25. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So l that's like a whole different time in your life. Holy yeah. crap. And <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, but going back, do you want me to go first or do you yes, want to go first? I do. I would love um, to. So I was in England and uh, had no idea about any of the stuff that was going on in the States or in Canada or anywhere, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just starting to audition and, and send, send tapes over uh, to America because I got an American manager because I got down to the last two for step up three. You would have been really good in that. <laughs> Thanks, 
face, babe. <laughs> it was like really <laughs> funny. Yeah, mad experience. Anyway, so I got a manager off that, and then she just started throwing me tapes from America and, and that kind of thing. And then, um, so I'd been taping for years, actually, because that was when I was a lot younger. But then that tape came through, and I remember thinking, what is this? <laughs> like, this is really cool, but I like it was totally different to anything that I had oh been yeah. sent before. Um, but anyway, so I, and I just kind of, to be honest with you, I just used to send tapes and think nothing's ever going to come back. And why am I blooming out doing this for the States anyway? I'm in Bristol. Like, well, I mean, I was in London for a long time. Then I was in Bristol. And you just think, this is ridiculous. And I was in Bristol and I sent a tape for, no, I was in London and I sent, sent a tape for Winona, ah, for the character of uh -huh. Winona. Um, and I really enjoyed doing that tape, which is the first time I've actually said that. But I loved it. It was, like, so good and badass and whatever. But I'm clearly not a wine owner <laughs> <laughs> at all. So, like, I did my best. I did a, 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 many people have heard this before, but I did a Deep South accent. Which can you, <laughs> you reenact that for us? Can you? <laughs> Any chance of replicating that accent? Uh, like... There's a big part of me that wants to. Yes, but <laughs> go with that part of you. Just only focus on that but part I of wish you. I I found it the other day, actually. I found the sides cap. Do you keep sides? I used to, and then it made me too depressed, so I started getting rid of them. Yeah, me uh, too. Because there were so many. I was like, holy me shit, too. this is like hours and hours of my life into the abyss. Sometimes when I'm <laughs> when I'm auditioning and doing self tapes, because I've never booked a self tape ever, and I always tell my agents and managers I'm shit at self tapes. Please get me in the room. Please get me in the room. And um, so many self tapes, and uh, I used to keep them. There's two ways of looking at this, really. One is many ways. look at all of this beautiful chance that I got to act and do my thing, mm. and look at all this practice I've got. And, and then there's look at all this failure. So it's really dependent on how you exactly. want to look at it. 100%. I went through yeah. the exact same thing. I used to, when I first started, I used to really like keeping them because it was like yeah. I'd work on them, do all the notes, get really like into it, and you have all your hopes up, and then you're like, oh, and then it doesn't come back, and you're like, oh, but I really enjoyed that. So I'm going to like keep it and put it okay. on the side. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, that was at the time when it was Winona. Mm -hmm. So I sent. Um, a, a, a self tape for for uh, Winona, and um, um, Do the voice. Oh yeah, the voice, the voice. Oh, the voice. That's why I blanked it out. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't want to come back on that one. <laughs> but anyway, I found it the other day, and I read it, and it's not. It wasn't dolls. It was. You found it. I found it, and it wasn't dolls. It was the Winona one, and it wasn't dolls that she said. She said. Agent. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just. Let me see. What was it? There was something about get dead in them, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> I can't remember, but I just don't think I'm going to do the accent right now. But what I'll do, here's what we're going to do I'm going to go and look at the sides. And next time I do a panel, you can hold me to this. No, listen to it. I'm going to remember what the lines were, and I'm going to do the audition for you. It'll be well, quite hilarious. Yeah, that's easier if you that's know the lines. Guys, that's yeah. a big promise. I would hold her to that rather than <laughs> one line. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I can only cross my fingers that yeah. I'll be there for that. I don't know. Uh. Yeah, you've got like four weeks. Lexicon, you're saying? Four yeah. weeks. And I've also got it on tape as well. So I'm going to rewatch it. You do? Yes, that's got right. That one and my Waverly one. Oh my God, I didn't answer any of your we haven't that's been answering right. questions at all. But Poor we Claire did, like going back to it, We what happened is I then auditioned for that, loved it, and but it was obviously not right at all. And then months and months later, and you've, it's the same thing for you, right? Yep. Months and months later, it was like, Oh, I've got another audition for you for the sister, for Waverly, and uh, and so I did that, and again sent it off to the abyss. And then a long time later, long, long, long time later, I'd already booked another job that was going to shoot in India, and it got cancelled at last minute, and it completely broke my heart because I hadn't had any work for ages. It was like such a bad year. I was feeling super depressed, and. I was like, I'm going to India to shoot a movie. Wicked. And then it got cancelled just before. Right. 
and uh, and I was in Bristol with all of my stuff, and then I so I ended up going to Canada. God, this is a long story. But I went to Canada, and then I was in Montreal with my mum, who was like trying to be a positive mum, be like, "It's okay, you're gonna be fine." And I was like, "Mum, I'm done. I can't do this anymore." And then I got a phone call. I fell asleep in the park, and I got a phone call from my manager that woke me up. Um, and I was sat under the tree, and I'd literally just cried. And my mum was like, oh, my God, I'd, I'd never been honest about how I was actually feeling until that moment. And then I got a phone call. And it was my manager who's like, you know that show, Winona Earp? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, uh, uh, you mean the one that... And he got all, like, you know, nervous. Whatever. She went, yeah. She was like, are you in Montreal? Like, I was like, yeah. She was like... So here's the thing, honey. Um, <laughs> they want to see you, uh, but they can't pay for the flight. Um, so if you can get yourself to Montreal, uh, to Toronto, to meet Emily Andress, she'd love to. If not, you can tape with notes. So like you can talk to Emily on the phone, and then and she'll tell you what you need to do differently, and then you can do it with notes. And so I did it with notes. Uh, no, and so I was like, are you kidding? I'm going, oh my God. And then I went there, and then I met Mel and Emily, and we did the tape, and holy shit, changed our lives completely. And that was that, that's that amazing. <laughs> Isn't it I funny? down memory lane. And Kat has an amazing story. From I w Kat, I wanna hear your story. My Reader's Digest version. So it was. Uh, we'll take either version. I, I auditioned <laughs> for Winona. Same, so very similar to Dom. I auditioned for Winona. Then I auditioned for Waverly, who I really, really, really loved the part of Waverly. Um, but now, looking back at him, I could never imagine in a million years. Um, and then, uh, you know, same thing. Months go by here, nothing. It, it goes away with the, like, the rest of them that just float into the abyss. And um, <clears throat> I was going to uh, work a. I was doing some, some promo, I was driving Uber at the time to make money and I was working some promo uh, work. I was doing um, samples at a con um, some sort of convention, food convention or whatever, for a beer company with my ex that evening. One, oh. of, the, one of the jobs that you oh, do as an well unemployed God. actor. Oh God, I was just oh. like, this sucks. And, um, but you know, you, you do what you gotta do and uh, I had auditioned for Nicole like the day before Never in a million years thought I was going to get it because I, especially at that time in my life, I really hadn't found my, like, my base as a woman. And what I mean by that is I hadn't really found my strength very much, and so I never thought, I could never see myself in a powerful cop role. Right. And um, so I just never envisioned myself playing a part like that. I was still very much in what they had told me I was at theater school, which was, like, the ingenue, like, la, la, la girl. So, um... And then I was at the gym, which I never go to, and this is why we do things that we don't want to do, because good things happen when we do them. And uh, I was about to go serve my beer with my ex, and uh, my agent called me, and he says, they want to book you only, Nona. Um, you're going to do six episodes, and you have to dye your hair. So the other two girls are brunettes, so you're either going red or blonde. I'm like, I don't care. And he says, you're leaving tomorrow. Oh, did they give you the option for blonde as well? Blonde was the other option. Yeah, red or blonde. Mm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Better so, and I was on a plane the next day, and that was uh, I came in episode two of season one, and then it just kind of got ex kept getting ex extended. I guess they were watching dailies, and they liked the character of Nicole, and that we had really great chemistry. And yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, let's talk about that chemistry. I mean, because yeah. there was this, you know, I mean, how, how? When did you guys realize this this match was gonna, you know? gel and, and stick, and when, how did sort of the early evolution of the Way Hot relationship happen? For me, I would say I felt it mm -hmm. after the first scene, the first scene in Edley's office. That first day for me, that, I remember, I was so nervous for that scene. I remember being so nervous, and that was when I went, oh, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. Like, this yeah. is gonna be okay. Yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah. So what, what was it that you, that switched for you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to ask you not if you're uncomfortable. No, no, it's all not, it's all not. Um, 
God, there's many different ways to go with this answer, with this question. There's like a thousand things that obviously, it's a, it's a very complex scene. It's a very complex thing to do, I think. I think it's, um, but what I was going to say is there's, a w there's one way, and I th everyone's going to go, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a look that you give me. See? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> when... You say, I scare, you say, oh, I'm going to cry. Oh, oh, tell me. I got this. There's lights in the sky. Like, it just reminds you of the stars. We're all good. We're in the good place. Yeah, good place. Um, no, they, um, I remember I was, like, so nervous. And, like, it was fine because my acting teacher always used to say, if you're nervous and the character's nervous, you're fine, right? <laughs> So use it, like use that vulnerability because like if your character, maybe your character might be feeling that and it was kind of like, oh, that's so, so I remember just like reading, reading, reading it and being like, it's going to be fine because Waverly is nervous. Um, and then there's a, yeah, and I, I remember I was just speaking so fast and Paolo had always had been saying to me, I don't know, I've never told you this, but Paolo had been saying to me, taking me aside and going, we need to slow you down all the time. We just need to slow you down, Dom, like you're, just going too fast and I was and I would always be like oh really I'm going fast literally the whole time I just had no idea that I was going so fast and speaking so high <laughs> um, <laughs> and now I look back at season one which I never do because I'm like oh why are you speaking so high um, but yeah I, I had no I was, it was unconscious completely unconscious that I was going so fast um, and yeah so I was like really flustered I remember feeling extremely flustered in the thing and then um, you really looked at me when you go, I scare you? No, what did it, how did it go? Does she say it or I say it? And why does she say it? Trust them. <laughs> she says it. She says it because I say, you say, oh, let's see if we can remember. <laughs> Thank you. We may call on you later. <laughs> and actually, when you think about it, that line is genius. I've always wanted to do things that scare me. And kind of sets the tone for the whole series, in a way. Yeah. Well said. Wow, my mind just got blown a bit there. <laughs> I mean, it's really obvious when you're in this room and, and you know, we were backstage watching Amanda talk to you guys and, and hear your stories. It's obvious the impact, not just the show, but the relationship and you guys as actors have had, you know, globally. And I, I, what has it meant for you guys? I mean, it's obvious looking at you, Dominic, you see you tearing up and, and it's, it's really profound. How has that been to explore this relationship? Um, I think profound is, a, is an excellent word to use. I think um, what we've witnessed with this community and the entire experience of Winona and this sort of grassroots, tiny little show coming and being such a force, and then we're, you know, at, like, the People's Choice Awards. And, and not that it's about, it, it's not about the, uh, the awards. What it, what it was about was this little show that never, ever could have gotten there without the fans. Like, there's no way. And I think the experience has been profound because it has shown me so, so obviously what a, a powerful group, a, like a small but mighty group of people can be when they unite under a common cause. Communities. Build communities. Hashtag fight for Winona. I'm really proud of my water bottle stickers. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> she was showing them to me this morning. So, yeah. I was. I was like, no, but really, look how well they complement the colors. Because <laughs> I'm kind I of in love with that own. water bottle. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's amazing. I was a bit worried about the orange, to be honest, because I had a blue one and I lost it on New Year's Eve. Ugh, on a beach. Ugh. But I'm hoping someone found it and they're using it. Please. Um, anyway, but I uh, really like the sticker. But going just to um, put, a, put 
to um, go off what you were saying. Um, building communities, right? It's what it's, I think that's what it's taught us. Right? Why no, no? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And, the, and this fight for Winona, everyone's laughing at me, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I really mean it. it it's like the Winona Earp is, um, has had the power to bring these amazing human beings together that are so open-minded and so inclusive and... For me, I had never found that before mm -hmm. this family. Um, and it went and it has completely inspired a huge, hum humongous amount of change in, in who I, the trajectory of who I was going to end up mm -hmm. um, in a massive way. I, I, my God, I, if I had got step, step up, up three. <laughs> up three. Where would I be now? That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Wow. Yeah, exactly. But, but that's the thing. And, it, and, it, and I'm more and more like, I've just come back from five months in Brazil where I didn't go to a single, I, I went to like three major cities, but that was it. And I just went to little communities and villages and uh, fishermen's towns. Um, and you start realizing the, the sense of community and how important that is and how important it is to find your people and to connect with those people and to support those people and to be there for each other because we're at a time where so much stuff is going on that is causing so much hate and pain and all of the things that why on earth would we bring that into our world why would we even entertain the idea that that's a good idea mm -hmm. separating each other and and judging each other and all of those things so it has it was i would say it's the catalyst to me understanding what community really means and and the power of that Absolutely, and that it doesn't have to be a physical community. It can be a community that exists online, I know, and it can be just as powerful. That is a, that's yeah. a mad one as well, the, the online thing. I'm still getting my head around that. I'm yeah. still, because it's a, it's a weird thing when you're in that at the beginning. Right, we've talked about that. But, but actually now, and I think I was judging it because my father was about the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you kind of go, oh, really? And, you know, it's like, but back in the old days, it's way better, you know? He doesn't speak like that at all. He's really cool, actually. And my dad would be so, <laughs> he'd be pissed off if he, knew if he saw this. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. He'd be like, but it's true. He's a bit negative about the internet. And there are horrors to the internet. And then you see the other side. And of like, course. Actually, no, there is a really shitty side, but there's this beautiful side as well. Absolutely. Like, people can connect without together. being in the same physical space. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to take questions because I know you guys want to talk to them. Um, there's two mics in the aisles so you can line up and we'll get through as many as we can. And uh, while they're kind of lining up, everybody in here loves you guys, loves the show. You guys are holding hands. That's so cute. Um, <laughs> Do you want to come back all together again? No, I like, I like the fact that you've done that. I just have never noticed that before. I think if you have two rings, you should spread them out. We're having a debate. <laughs> no, it's, no, it, no, 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 it's not a debate. I'm just fascinated because I, I don't really know much about wedding rings and stuff like that, that you spread them out or you put them together. I thought there was a rule that you had to keep them next to each other. There's no rules. There is no rules. No. Who makes the rules? No one. We make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I think they look great either way, just weighing in. <laughs> um, we can start over here. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hello. I'm Laura. I'm a New York City erper. And I just want to thank everybody for the billboards. Uh, Claire, you mentioned that there was one billboard in New York City. There's actually been 68. Wow. I saw the one. I saw the one on Times Square. Are they scattered all through the boroughs? Well, they're digital, so they change frequently. So okay. So we go there every other night or whatever, take pictures of it, and yeah. You guys, 68 so billboards. Yeah. And a lot of Erpers are even contributing to uh, 
a hot chocolate and donut fun for us when the, when the weather was cold, so we thank you for that as well. Um, my question, I, I talked to you guys yesterday about this. It's a little fun game. Um, Dom, who can you call at 3 a.m., Kat or Nicole? Kat and Nicole. <laughs> Sorry. That's actually both. right. She said both. I said both, too. Yeah. Uh, Kat, Kat, who's better at remembering dates, Waverly or Nicole, or, or Dom? Waverly. Yeah. <laughs> Dom, who's a better gift giver, Kat or Nicole? There's really no way to say. <laughs> because if you look at the evidence, <laughs> Waverly, has, was, has she received a gift from Nicole? We didn't see a Christmas exchange, but there could have been. No, I'm asking. Do, do we have a birthday? or We've got the balloons, where she's got all the balloons... The sorry, sorry balloons, party. the sorry party. She receives a gift in our comic book. Oh, yeah. yeah. We wrote a comic book together. Yeah, guys. that was cool. So there's the first gift, so okay. you guys can be the judge when that comes out. Well, Kat said she's the better gift giver, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, giving gifts. Yeah. yeah. Gifts. Kat, who's the better cook, Dom or Waverly? Waverly. <laughs> Uh-oh. You're a pretty good cook, too, though, but I would say Waverly, just because we see her making all these fancy meals and stuff. Dom said. Dom said Dom. Dom but, said. No. But. To be fair. Dom said that Waverly might be a better baker. Not might. I said oh. Waverly would okay. be the better baker. I think, think be the better Dom, cook. I think I would prefer Dom's cooking over Waverly's cooking. Oh, yeah. Completely different. Well, no. Actually, maybe no, not maybe not, because she is vegan She's now. She's vegan. Can you... Could I invite myself to your house for dinner when we go back, hopefully, yeah. for season four? A hundred percent. And I'm yeah. also getting way better. So, so this is the thing. Great. I've just got. I've just found a, a massive passion for cooking recently. I don't know if anyone else has. Yeah. I have a, passion a massive for passion for eating, so this is going <laughs> to go beautifully. It's a good match. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, great match. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just realizing that food's really cool, and it's really cool and interesting because when you travel. You like you start looking at what you're eating because it's always different, and then like in Brazil they have um, a farinha de tapioca, which is um, do you know what tapioca is? Yeah, we have tapioca here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here we got it in our lunches. <laughs> what is little. it over here? It's like a rice pudding. Rice, isn't it? Yeah. Rice pudding. Okay, so this is this is. Uh, flour of tapioca, okay, which is tapioca is like the root vegetable, right? Mm -hmm. And then they make it into a flour, yeah. yeah. And then we and then we had um, tapioca, <laughs> <laughs> which is they they put it over the heat, <laughs> <laughs> and they put it through a sieve. No, it's really interesting. <laughs> I'm just looking at Dom's face, and then I rack focus with my eyes to Claire's face behind her. <laughs> and it's beautiful because Claire doesn't I'm just quite know us yet. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just picturing like a, a YouTube channel for you. <laughs> like a cooking, like cooking with Dom, you know? And right? Okay. And I'm also like, is tapioca good? I don't know. I don't well, know anyway, you, know, you put it on the thing, and you go over the heat, and it like goes like that, <laughs> and it all just naturally sticks together. You don't have to put any oil or anything. It just sticks together, and then you put whatever you want in it, and you fold it over, and it is healthy and delicious, and they have it for, for breakfast, and it's so much better than bread for you. It's a vegetable, root vegetable, and it's delicious and extremely nutritious. And uh, I brought two kilos of it back. <laughs> so that I can make my mom tapioca. But cooking's great. And I do think that, wave dum that at the moment, my cooking might be better than Waverly's. So there you go. Waverly's got a lot of other things. Thank you. About. Thank okay. you so much. Great um, little question. Dom, were you talking about James Corden before? Huh? James Corden? Yeah, what about him? Were you talking about him, the, the oh. late night show? No, but that's a, that's a good one. But he's also British. I was trying to find the American version so that she would understand. Jimmy Kimmel. 
Thank you. Jimmy Kimmel. There you go. Absolutely. That's what I feel like. Do you know what I mean? We're on like a stage. Yes. No, I understand. Do you understand? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm Stephanie. Stephanie and I'm a Calgary Herper. Uh, <laughs> and um, my question's like just a little fun, weird thing. Uh, sorry if you don't understand this, Dom, because I know you've been like out of everything. Um, <laughs> But if you were on a show like The Masked Singer, what kind of mask would you use? Ooh. What was the question? So if you were on the show um, like The Masked Singer, Masked Singer is a new show where um, well-known celebrity professional singers sing with a mask and, and people have to guess who it is. Wow. I've actually never seen it. Do they get to choose their mask? Is that kind of part of, oh, yeah. okay. And they're crazy masks. Like and then do you find out at the end who it is? Yeah, once they get eliminated. Once they get eliminated. Or they win. <laughs> so, so describe a couple I'm of masks. I'm getting really them. into jungle stuff lately. I have these great earrings and, well, pineapple. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of, I think I would like to do some sort of, like, zebra or a, a, some sort of, I don't know, African wildlife animal. Wait, so hang on a minute. So you <laughs> <laughs> I was picturing you as a wildlife animal <laughs> on a stage singing. Is that what, am I yeah, imagining right exactly But the masks are very, um, they're very cool. They're like kind of a whole costume. Almost looks like something you could find cosplay. It's not necessarily like the Lion King up on stage. It's more kind of the futuristic. Like, yeah, there's more kind of, more of an artistic interpretation. And then you sing a song. Yeah. And we don't know who it is. And we watch, and then we, we vote them out. <laughs> and then you find out when they vote out who it is. Yeah. I need to see this. <laughs> Great. OK, thank you. Uh, we, I'll ask you the name later, because I've forgotten already. Um, but the answer to the question is, um, what kind of mask would you wear? Is that the question? Yeah. Stephanie, I love your question so much. Thank you so much for this question. Um, I think I would wear. Um, so you're going tribal. So oh. you can go anything. So you can be a pig. You can be anything. <laughs> there was a pineapple. There's a unicorn. I'm less into unicorn. unicorns at the moment, which is a big shocking thing. But not because of that. I just think I overdid the unicorn thing. I overdid <laughs> it. Um, but I think I would. Uh, hmm? <gasps> a butterfly. Did you say a butterfly? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> a butterfly. That's exactly right. I would be a butterfly. That's awesome. Thank you. Hi. 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 Yeah. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Jen from the Erp Fiction Addiction podcast. Uh, Kat, we had you on the show yeah, last year. Yeah, we spoke. Th yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. Nice to put a um, face to your name. Oh, yeah. Uh, after um, we finished recording, uh, I said that at every future con, I would come up and ask you both, if you were both here, for a prompt for our fic authors out there. Uh, so, Kat and Dom, okay. if you could come up with a fic prompt for our uh, illustrious fan okay. fiction authors. Fic prompt. A prompt. Uh, they would like a prompt for fiction fanfic writers. Uh, a prompt. Like a writing prompt. So... This is the this is a situation go right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dom has a cooking channel. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Waverly has a cooking channel and Nicole's trying to help her. And they're in the middle of a recipe, a vegan recipe, experimenting with a new mysterious fruit from Brazil. <laughs> and Waverly Goiaba. It has to be goiaba because it's so good. Goiaba. goiaba. Goyaba, and Waverly goes to put the goyaba in a pot of boiling water, and it hits the water, and go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boots goyaba and cats. In I know hot you're water. In Interesting you're choice. Notes. I don't know how the goyaba is going to be in hot water, but have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I like it. Yeah. And good okay. luck. We're going to have to run with that. It's going to be great. Should we do? I know we don't. I, there's so many of you. I want to make sure we get through some of your questions. We'll try to go a little faster. Hi. Hi. I'm Kalei. I'm from Hawaii. Um, I don't know how you guys handle this weather because I am cold. 
Yeah. Um, so I've been actually reading Winona Earp since 2003, the original comics. Wow. Yeah, I have Legend. the first edition that Bo signed for me, so that's nice. <laughs> but my question was, you guys are writing the comic, right, for the, the Backlash. So how is it different from writing um, like a film script to a comic book? And then did you take inspiration from the comics that they have out, or did you talk to Bo or anything about that? That's a good question. Well, Thank we had you. a fun experience. So we divided and conquered, which I think was great. You I were amazing at writing dialogue. So amazing. Oh, oh my gosh. She's so good at it. I was like, I sent you a voice I message. Know, and I was like, like, holy wow. wow. Um, I am not very good at writing dialogue. So I took more of the um, but Kat spatial was logistics. <laughs> so like the way things move. But he, it's, it was a really, this is the first time we're talking about this, yeah. so this is why you're getting all the like emotion coming You're welcome, guys. <laughs> but I was in Brazil when we were writing it. <laughs> and we just went, it kind of, how did it happen? We, we got speeded along the process, didn't it? And then yeah. suddenly it was like, oh no, because we were going, supposed to be going back to Winona. So, so we, we, we had were pushed excited. it to write it in Calgary. Yeah. It's the first spot. I was like, I just think it would be together. better that I'm not traveling out of a backpack whilst I'm writing a comic book. Like, that's probably not a good idea. So, because I wanted to give my whole heart and soul into it. And so we were like, how about we do it when we get to Winona at the same time as we film? Is that okay? And, and IDW were like, yeah, absolutely, right? At the, at the beginning. At the time. At the beginning. And then it kept getting pushed back further and further. And I was like, well, I'm going to just continue my journey because I feel like I need to stay in Brazil. Um, and then it was kind of like, really quick, it was like, well, you're doing it now. Yeah, they were basically <laughs> like, we need this next week. Are you guys working on it? And we were like, sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> And I was, yeah, so it was kind of mad. And I was in the Amazon, and it was like, how on earth are we going to do this? Did you feel a bit, oh, well, I certainly felt yeah. like, well, how are we going to do this? But Kat was really calm about it, and you were so good. You were just like, don't worry, Dom, it's going to be great. And like, we'll just do the best we can, and it's going to be wicked. And I was like, okay, great. So we started writing it, and then I think, yeah, like you say, quite quickly, we realized, okay, well, Kat was, Kat was the leader, Absolutely, and completely. Like more logistics, I would no, just No, you say. were the driving force. You got us doing it. Me and Bo were a bit more blah, 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 off doing our own thing. And Kat was like, look, if we're going to do this, this is how it's going to work. This is, it was really, I mean, I'm going to make you re-listen to that message. It's impressive, Kat. She sent us a voice note being like, so, no, it was amazing. She's like, so I think the easiest way of doing this is to get a Google document and so that we can all comment and do our notes whilst we're all in different places, da, da, da. and it was incredible. And it's exactly what we needed, because then next thing you know, it was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna go in and write the dialogue. Kat was looking at how to, um, such an amazing eye, an amazing eye for um, shots and how to make it exciting visually. Like, zooming in on the thing, and like the way you wrote it, I just like, completely saw it. Saw it in my head and was like, oh, it's a film, wicked. Da, 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 da. Okay, well, she'd probably say that at that point. And then this, and it was just like it was easy. A very good partnership, actually. I thought we worked really Me well too. together. Yeah. Oh, I was so like, happy. oh, this is great. Yeah. yeah. Our skills complemented, and Bo was so great. So great. And he was so chill. great to us, and he was so, because he easily could have been like, just write a few things, but I'll really write it. Yeah. And I think he was so insistent on that if they were going to put our names on it, that, that he wanted it to come from us, not just like, let's just slap their names on it, because um, you know that would have been maybe the easier way, but he was so patient and probably took him like 15 times as long yeah. to write eight pages as it would have, but he was so, so great. good. And it was a hard, and it was a hard thing for him as well, I think, because we only got eight pages. We wrote something so long, which I kind of hope that we get to. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Do, yeah. We were like, oh, we're writing a comic book, wicked. Like, we're thinking it was going to be much like probably t what Tim and Bo do together. Um, but it turned out that for one reason or another, it had to be eight pages. And so it was like a hard task to be like, you're writing your first comic book, but don't write it that much. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you have to be like more... Um, picky and like you know I don't know how to, to describe yeah, but you know yeah. what I mean it was like a hard task for him as well so we but he just just wonderful every step of the way we had a little whatsapp group that we would be like I've gone in and done this 
have a check it out when you can. Um, and then, like, we just kind of conversed through that. And like you say, I think it was the perfect partnership. Yeah. And it was really cool. Yeah. Thanks. And, and when is it coming out? Ooh, no idea. Okay. Guys, no, I, we actually... S yeah. It's part of a, a compilation. Yeah. The, the, the Kickstarter, com yeah. May. Thing. Coming out in May. Okay, got it. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank Great so question. Much. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Robin, and I'm from Boston. Um, I just wanted to first say thank you to both of you for being so open about talking about your struggles with anxiety. Um, as someone who has anxiety themselves, it's meant a lot to me. Um, my question is for Kat. Uh, you had talked before about have you, how you came up with your own um, backstory for Nicole as you were working on on the earlier seasons, mm -hmm. and that but that it was different from what we ended up seeing in season three. So I was hoping you could talk a little bit about what you had come up with for your your backstory for Nicole. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question. I I had. I mean, the main kind of thing was that I had imagined Nicole to have come from a family that was still very much a family unit and very much supporting her together. I just had imagined that this such strong, solid person had come out of a really big, boisterous, supportive family unit. And what I later discovered is that that was not the case. Um, it, was just, it was a really beautiful lesson to me that someone just as strong and confident in themselves could come from a place where they were not supported and um, really had to figure out a lot of things on her own. So I think it, it changed my perception and almost made me just fall in love with her even more that she could be this like incredible, amazing person but have not had the support of her family, um, both for, I mean, especially for what she wanted to do with her, her life was to be a cop. Um, so I kind of imagine that she came from a family of cops or detectives or people who worked in that area and to find out that her parents were kind of these hippie intellectuals who really didn't support that aspect of her and she had lost the people she, who really supported her more, which was her aunt and uncle in the fire, um, just really changed a lot of things for me about who she was. But I love that because I think she's now a beautiful example of um, that even if the beginning of our life is not um, as we maybe we would have wished it would be different or we wish we had grown up in different circumstances that we can still choose to be a wonderful whole supportive person um, and uh, I think she like kind of rose from the ashes a little bit uh, literally and figuratively so I um, <laughs> um, that was kind of the main thing that that shifted for me thank you thank you great question thank you Hi. Hi, I'm Greg from Seattle. Um, thank you both for the amazing performances you guys have given and the choices you've made and everything. I think we all just love you very much, as you can tell. Um, Kat, were you prepared at all coming into this? It's a comic book. It's going to be a sci-fi thing. Uh, the fandom, uh, what it's going to be like one day, you're going to be standing in front of hundreds of geeks. Not the people here. The people here are very cool. <laughs> I mean at the other conventions, they're geeks. Um, just what that's going to be like and how that may take over parts of your life? Wow. Prepared 100% not, but I will say that if there is an apocalypse, I want to be with the geeks 100%. <laughs> because I just like, even these conventions, everything's just so organized and well run. And, and um, But I was not, no, I mean, no, definitely not. Um, especially, I think, being an actor in Canada, you are kind of, uh, you go into it knowing that no one may ever know your name or whatever, and that's okay. Um, because we just don't have the star system, and this doesn't happen to a lot of Canadian actors. So you kind of go into your career never really having this possibility be a factor. Um, I mean, it's, gosh, we've just been through so much. So much. It's crazy to me how many of these panels we've done, countries and people we've met and stories we've heard, and... Um, I wouldn't change anything for the world. Uh, and I'm so grateful to have had this experience. Um, but prepared, no. I don't think anything can prepare you, but I wouldn't want it any other way because I think the most beautiful things in life come out of situations where we have no expectations because then it takes us by surprise. 
so what a beautiful gift that is. And, and I, 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 I'm so glad I had no idea. I'm, I'm so glad. I actually have kept one email, though, from Emily. It was when she saw the footage from our first scene together, and she sent us an email saying, are you guys, <laughs> do you remember this? Are you guys ready to be gay icons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I was like, okay. I, I mean, like, I had no idea what that meant at all. It would be really interesting to go back and see what we responded. I think I was like, glad you liked it. <laughs> I mean, what are you supposed to say? It's like your boss is essentially being like, great job. So you're like, okay, I still have a job. But um, no expectation, but I think I will take that as a, a lesson moving forward in my life because I think expectations just set us up for, for sometimes disappointment. And it's better to go into things with just heart open and um, ready for whatever whatever hits you. Did that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, actually? I think okay. so. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Ashley and I live in Fircrest, Washington. And um, Dominique, your mission of Start the Wave has changed the lives of many fans over the last year. And as someone who has previously kind of always thrived on human energy, positiveness, um, I found it difficult to be polite in today's social climate. Um, do you have any advice for folks who are searching for ways to manage stress or to be kind to people that are unkind for either of you to answer? It's a wonderful question, and hearing you speak so eloquently <laughs> is like, oh, such a gift. Thank you. Um, I have been on such a journey with Start the Wave, firstly, I'd just like to say, and um, I'd like to take this opportunity to say that um, there has been no content coming out for a little while because I've been away, but that's because I was doing so much work in understanding what Start the Wave really was for me. Because <coughs> I realized that I was going down a road where you, I, I knew all of the reasons why I started it originally. I understood that, but I don't think it was necessarily coming from exactly the right place um, because it was coming from a feeling of, shit, I've got this platform and that has, res you should have responsibility for pushing out the things that you believe in and talking about the right things, but not having any confidence to do it <laughs> and not really knowing if what I was saying had any value or whether it was even right because I didn't have any confidence with what I was actually ever saying. Um, but doing it anyway, which is quite remarkable, really. You have to be like, okay, well, that shows like willing at least. Yeah. Um, but I went away and, and I've really been coming, coming back around to the values of of why I want to do it and what I want to go forward with. And so there's going to be lots of really cool stuff happening from here on with it, which I'm now really excited. But one of the things that I had to learn was exactly that, which was how on earth, when things are so unjust, so um, out of alignment with the things that you believe in your core when no one else is watching, when you're really like just being yourself, truly what you believe how when somebody is so unconscious in the way that their their approach with it um how can that not like get you going and enrage you and then you end up putting more not hate but more negative emotion into the abyss because you're going you're getting involved because it's like a trigger right it's like something will come at you and you're like but no that's not okay and that's something that I believe so strongly and then you'll act out right like unconscious behavior and to be honest with you the only th and the only thing really that has helped me with that was through a hell of a lot of meditation yeah. <laughs> um a hell of a lot of spirituality in whatever form you want to, whatever labels you want to put on it. <laughs> um, we were talking about that this morning, so that's why. Um, but 
that has that has helped me tremendously. And there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out on Start the Wave about all of that and my journey with that and what that has meant to me and how hopefully fans can, um, if there's if there's even a tiny bit in there, you know, that might be useful for you guys, it will all be coming out. But basically, compassion is the is the the bottom line. Compassion in the fact that. For example, what Kat was saying about um, different upbringings, and you can still, like with Nicole, you can still choose to be a good person. You can still choose to do that as a choice and everything. Some people have, you can't judge what other people have had as their life. We have got, there's a planet of so many different ways of doing things, so many different ways of beliefs and everything like that. I just try my hardest about going, maybe if I was in that life, I would be as closed-minded as that person. I feel, I'm sorry that that, that is the way that our world is. That's really rubbish that there are people that think like that. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to be calm and I'm going to try and be an example of the type of person that I want in this world to make the world a better place. And that's through compassion, but fuck me. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm from Mill Creek, Washington. And my question is for uh, Kat, but Dom can chime in if she wants. So, <laughs> so in um, every seventh episode of Winona Earp, we have wind hot scenes. And I was wondering if you were to write um, that episode, how would you want it to go? One of my faves, number seven. Um, yeah, oh, I just love it because it's like, go play, have a little break. Um, oh, what would they get into? I mean, I love seeing Winona and Nicole trying to do their job together. <laughs> I mean, that's the best, really, is just these two people who are trying to do a very similar thing, come at it from very different ways, kind of like what you were just speaking about a little bit. Um, but in but in a great, fun way. And um, I, how would I write, oh, I, I mean, just some other, I think I, what I would like to see, okay, so one time, I, I, I'm a really big um, fan of Oprah. And uh, one time Oprah, like, somebody asked me, because I I'm notoriously don't have um, a lot of pop culture. I didn't grow up watching a lot of TV, and I'm not super pop culture savvy, and it's been a, quite a learning curve for me in this world. I, we're gonna come back around to your question, I promise. Yeah. And um, I watched a lot of Oprah, though. <laughs> it probably explains a lot about me, but... Um, <laughs> but one time, Oprah and her best friend, Gail, went to, like, a pioneer village. <laughs> Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yes, okay. And they had to live, like, with no undies and live <laughs> off the land, and it was hilarious. And so I would like to see Winona and Nicole go on some sort of like overnight where they had to survive and maybe like, or go into a different time together where the whole world was foreign to them. So neither of them had a point of reference. Oh, that's so cool. That would be, I think, really fun. Cause then it would really put them on like an equal, well, they're on a, like an equal playing field because they don't know where to start either of them and they have no preconceived way of doing things. So I think that would be fun. Told, see, we came back around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank Definitely. You. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Jasmine. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, yeah. Uh, my question is, um, after three seasons, do you kind of go back, and is there a scene that sticks out where you wish that you played that differently? Any, any scenes, acting-wise, that you wish you would have maybe had a different interpretation of, or, or? Yeah, does one specifically come to mind? I mean, I, I know that feeling. Yeah. For sure. I wish, I always wished that I had more time with um, Maeve in season three. Yeah, we shot that day, man. I saw that day on the call sheet. It was a Friday. 
You never want to have a big day on a Friday. What's amazing with Maeve? Oh, no, I loved it. I just wanted a little more time to, like, I think I got two takes. And it was just uh, for me as an actor, because so I, different I felt so vulnerable, and I was, like, really going for something. And I remember telling our director, April, it's like, please pull me back if this is too much. Because, you know, sometimes you just don't have a judge of, like, where is the edge of... I'm in the world, and then this is, like, too big or too much for camera. Well, it's because human beings don't tend to have that experience in life. <laughs> so it's a little thing yeah. called imagination, isn't it? Ew, and yeah. you go, you could imagine it a thousand different ways. So you're like, this is really vulnerable because, yeah. yeah. And so I, I just wanted to, pl I wanted to play with that a little bit more, and I remember that day was a very big thing. We had an 11-page day, which is a very, very big day. And we had so little time. But, you, uh, but it ended up being perfect. Thank you for saying that. I just, that was one of those ones where I was like, oh, I wish I could have had just like a little more time to give a bit more different I colors. I understand. Yeah. <sighs> Mine is, uh, <laughs> uh, when the scene when my dad dies and uh, Varun comes up to me and says, uh, I can see it on my best friend's face. Because I just, like, I couldn't do it. I just was like, there was just so much pressure on that day of getting it so windy, and it was, like, so hard to connect with the fact that, like, your dad's died, but you didn't even know you had one a minute ago. Like, you know, it's like, he's new, and he's young, and he's his ex-boyfriend of the thing, and I just was really overwhelmed of, like, not knowing how she would feel. Um, but also thinking that I had to cry and that that was uh, something that had to happen. But actually now, in, in retrospect, I think that I'm learning that tears don't come when you think they're going to come. <laughs> um, and that actually it, it would have had a lot more power to just be like really confused about the situation and, and but also being sad. This what is, you know, it, it, was, it was a sad scene. The thing that was actually sad was not the, the, the dad there, I think. It's actually... And when I read the scene originally, I bawled my like bawled out crying when for, when um, Jeremy says that, like bawled out crying. I was like, this is the most amazing scene. <laughs> and so I think there was this expectation of making that scene so beautiful because it was such a powerful scene to mm -hmm. read. So I was like, <clears throat> I had all these expectations of making this amazing acting choice and everything, and it was completely the opposite. Um, but a good lesson, really, when I look back at it. So thanks for your question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. We have time for one more question, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm, I'm Megan. Um, I'm from uh, Mount Lake Terrace. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, my question is, how does it feel to be role models for, like, um, little kids that are LGBTQ, like baby gays like me and stuff like that. It feels amazing. It feels amazing. Thank you for coming here and have the courage to stand up and be unapologetically who you are because you're wicked and you have amazing style <laughs> <laughs> literally can we all just appreciate the outfit it's so cool <laughs> and your glasses and your hair and you are just rocking it you are absolutely rocking it so you're a massive inspiration to us as well I would say um, and it's a really hard question to answer because how does it feel? It feels amazing. It feels amazing and it feels better than I feel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having the courage to stand up and say that. I wish we had longer to talk. You guys are totally amazing. I've loved this hour. Have you guys had a good time? One more big round of applause, please. More cat.